All right, let's take a look at some examples of the Rational Roots Theorem. So I'm looking at exercise 52 on page 187, where we're given the polynomial x cubed minus 7x squared minus 5x plus 3, and we're asked to find all of the zeros of f of x. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the rational zeros, which is the Rational Roots Theorem. So we need to look at the constant, co the constant term and the leading coefficient, which in this case, since it's not there, it's just 1. So we look at the factors of 3, the factors of the last number, divided by the factors of the first number, the factors of 1, the leading term, leading coefficient, rather. Well, that's fairly easy. The factors of 1 is just 1 in itself, and with 3, it's 1 and 3. So, listing out all the, rational, all the possible rational roots is very easy. It's just 1 over 1, plus or minus 1 over 1, and plus or minus 3 over 1. In other words, plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. So, looking at my cheat sheet, I know that minus 1 is going to be a solution here. Uh, I would recommend using a graphing calculator to kind of get a sense of, oh, it looks like minus 1 is a 0, and trying that out. Because a graphing calculator is a very easy way of quickly identifying which of these rational numbers look like they're actually zeros. That way you're not wasting time doing synthetic division on a, on a bunch of rational numbers that don't turn out to be zeros. So I wrote down the coefficients of the polynomial 1x cubed minus 7x squared minus 5x plus 3. I drop the leading coefficient, drop the 1, multiply minus 1 times 1 to get minus 1, Add minus 7 plus minus 1 to get minus 8. Multiply minus 1 times minus 8 to get plus 8. Add minus 5 and 8 to get plus 3. Multiply minus 1 times plus 3 to get minus 3 and excellent. Zero. This is what we're looking for. We found a root. Because this last number is 0, it tells us the remainder is 0, which tells us that f of minus 1 is 0. So this is what's left over. This is the quotient. So the quotient, doing synthetic division on something starting with x cubed, results in something starting with x squared. So this is minus 8x plus 3. This is what the book calls the depressed equation because we kind of pulled x equals minus 1 out of the original polynomial and got a smaller polynomial out, this depressed polynomial. And if we solve this, the roots of these will be the remaining roots of the original polynomial. Well, in this case, Solving this quadratic, I don't think this is going to factor. So you're either going to have to complete the square or you're going to have to use the uh, quadratic formula, which is going to be my plan of action. So our a is 1, b is minus 8, and c is 3. So writing down the formula, we have that our final two roots are going to be minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac and all of that is going to be put over 2a. Now, I said minus, or uh, b was minus 8, so this is a minus minus 8 plus or minus square root b squared is going to be minus 8 squared minus 4 times a times c. So that's 4 times 1 
times 3 and that's going to be all over 2 times a, 2 times 1. So let's do some simplifying. Minus a minus 8 is a plus 8 or just 8. Minus 8 squared is the same thing as 8 squared, it's 64. 4 times 1 times 3. Anything times 1 is just itself, so this is meaningless. This is just 4 times 3, which is uh, 12. So it's 64 minus 12 is inside the square root. We have 2 on the bottom. So that's 8 plus or minus 64 minus 12 is going to be 50, uh, 52. And I believe 4 goes into 52. 52 is something like 4, 13. So the square root of 52 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 13. And I can't break that down any further because 13 is prime. So this is the square root of 4 times the square root of 13. All of this is over 2. So that's 8 plus or minus 2 square roots of 13 divided by 2, which means that 8 over 2 plus or minus 2 root 13 over 2 I can do this if I put 2 under everything. Then I can cancel. 4 plus or minus square root of 13. So we've just found all the zeros of this polynomial. We've solved a cubic, which is pretty impressive. We found that minus 1 was one of the zeros. 4 plus square root 13 was another one of the zeros and 4 minus square root 13 is yet another the last of these zeros here and if you want you can even write this out as having factored although this isn't necessary uh, for the answer I do want to emphasize this point. I think it's rather important that each of these zeros corresponds to a factor of f of x. If you were to FOIL all of these out, you would get the original polynomial back. There we go. A little cramped here, but I just got, all I have really is just x minus the first root times x minus the second root times x minus the third root. And that's all it is. Each root corresponds to a factor. There's a very nice correspondence between. And that is absolutely no accident. Anyway, aside from waxing about the poetry of this. Let's go on to uh, another example. Something like uh, 54. So in this case we're dealing with a fourth order or a quartic polynomial. x to the fourth minus 6x cubed minus 7x squared plus 54x eh, minus 18. That's not going to be fun. So we start off with, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even do the, um, the steps like I normally do. So step one is to do the rational roots theorem. Sorry about that. I'm usually pretty good at that, but this time I dropped the ball. So our constant term is 18, plus or minus 18, it really doesn't matter, we'll add the plus or minuses later. We factor 18 and divide those by the factors of the leading coefficient, which in this case, since it's not there, it's 1. Reason why I didn't like 18, 
grumbled when I saw 18 was because, you know, what are the factors of 18? 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 18. That's a fair number of factors. And dividing anything by 1 is just itself, so... You know, if this thing, if this polynomial has any nice roots, these are it. But this doesn't do a fantastic job of narrowing the field down. So for you, I would recommend a graphing calculator. Uh, for me, I'm going to cheat like a madman and use the answers that my instructor's edition gives us. And the instructor's edition tells us that plus 3 is an answer and minus 3 is an answer. So you try synthetic division. So this is a good example. So we're going to try, let's start with a positive. Try x equals plus 3. So the coefficients are 1, minus 6, minus 7, 54, and minus 18. So, drop the 1, and we're multiplying by 3. So 3 times 1 is 3. Add to get minus 3. Multiply 3 times minus 3 is minus 9. Add, and we get a minus, what, 16? Multiply, that's 30 plus uh, 18, so that's 48, a minus 48. And then 54 minus, plus a minus 48 is 6. 3 times 6 is 18. And we get 0, which is good. So once you get, once you get a 0 remainder, keep trying synthetic division with uh, with these numbers until you get until you get down to this until you get down to a situation where you're left with three numbers and a zero remainder because this means you have a quadratic x squared plus x plus one equals zero and we can solve quadratics so I'm going to continue with x equals minus 3, but I'm going to continue on this result because I'm just working my way down to a smaller and smaller polynomial. I've pulled out 3, x equals 3, from this polynomial, and I get this. So I'm not going to use the original anymore. I'm going to use the one with one less root, with the root plus 3 pulled out. So starting with that 1 minus 3 minus 16 and 6 I'm gonna try minus 3 so I'm gonna try x equals minus 3 drop the 1 multiply by minus 3 to get minus 3 add to get minus 6 multiply to get plus 18 add to get 2 multiply to get minus 6 and I get 0. Alright, I got 0. So I'm supposed to keep doing synthetic division until I reach 3 numbers and a 0. 1, 2, 3 numbers and a 0. I can stop synthetic division because what I have right here I've pulled out 3 minus 3 and what I'm left with now is a quadratic. And I'm going to solve this quadratic, and in the interest of time, I'm going to do it relatively quickly. Uh, minus 4ac. And the roots of this quadratic will be the last two roots of the original polynomial. So this is uh, 6 plus or minus square root of 36 minus 8. 
Forgive me, I am going through this rather fast, but the video is already long enough. Um, but if you take your time, just kind of use these as guideposts to make sure your work matches mine as you show more steps than me. Because I'm using my knowledge to jump through this rather quickly in the interest of cutting this long video out. So, you'll end up getting 3 plus or minus square root of 7. So your roots are plus 3, minus 3, and 3 plus or minus square root of 7. And the corresponding factors will be x minus 3, x minus a minus 3, x minus 3 plus square root 7, and then x minus the quantity 3 minus square root 7. But that's because I want to emphasize that point, and I'm already too long.